I'm excited to share with you my first ever visit to Italy. In this video, I will cover popular Italian street fashion I've noticed over and over again on the streets of Rome, Florence, Pompeii, Pisa, and Venice to name a few. I will also share with you a couple of goodies that I brought back with me. Now, the topics that I will cover today are handbags, colors, tops, bottoms, footwear, outerwear, and makeup to name a few. But wait, there's more. I will also do a giveaway, so stay tuned. I will start with a popular choice handbags and I must share this beautiful leather handbag from Boat Today. It's the same brand that makes the leather loafers featured in my recent video on fashion classics. Now, I chose this bag in January and I'm delighted to finally show it to you. It's linked down below with a discount code SIDEWIDE if you're interested to see their leather products. I've been filming a lot of fashion trend predictions lately and to see that these trends not only in stores but worn on the streets in other countries it makes me so happy i've actually seen this moon shaped handbag in florence in this slate color as well so it's made of leather and my favorite feature is this clasp which i've never seen open this way before to allow the extension of the handles now i keep saying this i'm not a handbag expert but i can pick up on details that are less common it's quite roomy from the outside and the leather is very well made. When I chose this color, I had a casual look in mind, an easy jeans look, especially now that denim wear is popular. It can easily be styled with navy, white, or any other color tone. Bo today sent me an extra handbag of this exact one and I will be gifting it to you. Very easy. It's my first giveaway and I created a special email giveaway at chiquette.us. Email me if you're interested and where you want me to send it to. To give a bit more time for the video to be watched, I will choose the lucky lady within the next two weeks of the video going live. I'm planning on doing a lot more giveaways. I just need to figure out a feasible way to give them to you. We'll work on it, I promise. Other popular handbag styles were the baguette shaped bags and the Chanel type of bag with the metal intertwined chains. Continuing with bags, let's talk backpacks. This is so far my favorite person just made on a trip. Italy is known for their abundance of leather products. You know, the handbag shops were everywhere. So for the most part, they had the same style. So if you're interested in shopping while there, do shop around and look for less touristic areas for a bargain. Now, to give you an idea, Rome has 2.8 million population versus Florence and Venice at around 300,000. The competition is much higher in Rome and the prices will be more affordable. Now, luckily I purchased my backpack in Rome and I still managed to negotiate from 190 euros to 125. By the way, ladies, I negotiate everything shamelessly and it never hurts to ask. It is much roomier than it looks and it has a lot of subtly organized compartments. Now, I really appreciate the elegance and simplicity of the design. It's not your regular tech backpack that you can pack for a weekend getaway. You know, those are practical, but I was going going for the grown-up look. I also like the camel color, which matches with my wool coat and my moto jacket and bow loafers. This backpack I hope to have for decades to come. Now, when you pick an item such as this one for long-term use, make sure it's in a color you like, you already have in your closet to match, such as shoes or outerwear, which will be seen together and should ideally match. Now, by the way, match does not mean identical color, it just means within the same family group. Brown shades would be one, black, gray another, and reds. Yes, I've seen a lot of red leather in Italy. Now, Italy's colors are white, red, and green, and while we think Gucci when we see them together, the flag colors shown on the outside of the handbag is popular and common on most accessories. Next popular handbag trend is the thick strap for purses. Now, I've seen it introduced in the US last spring, I believe, 
believe in. I thought it was a temporary fit, but no. Based on what I've seen, the straps were sold on their own quite a lot in neutral shades and colorful shades and some with designs and patterns. Now, based on the volume I've seen, for shops to carry that many variations, it makes me think that it's just an ongoing style that Italians adopted. Now, if any of you ladies or gentlemen watching are from Italy, please comment and let us know what are your thoughts on this topic. And for crossbody fans out there, you will be pleased to find that Italians wear them all day long. It was one of the most popular bag trends that I've seen in addition to the black shoulder purse with a chain leather intertwined or just a metal chain handle that I mentioned before. Store's new releases also had the bamboo top handle bag which I featured in my handbag trends of this year so we know that it's picking up in popularity. Colors. Hands down, the most popular color I've noticed was black. Hence what I'm wearing. Uh, my experience has been, you know, a tourist, of course, and I can only assume who's a tourist and who isn't. But I was trying really hard to identify real Italians because I want to understand the authentic native style. The most common outfit that I've seen was the monochromatic black head to toe with black turtleneck and then the jewelry on top. Bold jewelry, gold chain necklaces or with pearls, hoop earrings, layers of necklaces, and even more layers of gold bracelet stack. And it makes sense because when you have a black outfit, you want to brighten it up and bring back shine. And speaking of shine, one of the visits we've made was to Murano Island in Venice at the world-renowned glass factories. A souvenir I picked up is this delicate glass pair of earrings. There's a silver leaf inside and glass melted around it. It's truly a work of art. Venice has glass stores throughout the city and if you're interested in buying authentic Murano glass, I recommend going to the island and buying it there. No photography is allowed inside the gallery and they don't sell it online to prevent replication, but I've reached out to the factory that I personally purchased from and they can share the catalog by email request. I will link their website below for you. Back to the outfits, I've also seen a few blazers worn on top of the black turtlenecks. I do like the turtleneck blazer combination. They complement each other so well because the neck is noticeable even with a blazer buttoned. And I'm so proud to have bought this blazer right before the trip. It's from White House Black Market. It has this beautiful white trim and I've seen this style in Florence. I was pleasant surprised because it is very new. It was literally just released and I bought it because of the fit. It's an incredibly nice hourglass fit which we've talked about in the trends video. It is so flattering and the white makes it stand out and give it that umph, you know, a bit different from the usual black blazer which I already have. Now I personally purchased this ivory v-neck undershirt which was not cheap for what it is but I like the stretch and how it brings the outfit together. It runs in parallel with the blazer neckline. I will link them both below for you. Now, but for an Italian look, it's black on black turtleneck or crew neck light sweater underneath. Another cool tone combination I've seen business women wear was black or dark gray suits with lighter turtlenecks and layered chain pearls on top. Not the plain pearls, but with designs. Again, to make the outfit less boring, chic, while maintaining the polished professional look. A beautiful color statement that I've seen is the combination of an all black monochromatic look with a pop of color. Now think a green jacket or a green purse and a matching green scarf or a green hat and shoes. Again, a sea of black. It's well coordinated and produces this effect of sophisticated elegance. It's a powerful effect that we can all use and apply easily in our daily outfit. I think the trick is to go bold with more volume, bigger surface of color. Don't be shy to buy a bright monochromatic hat or coat or purse. Let's talk tops. I haven't seen too many. <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't usually pay attention to them. Maybe because it's winter or perhaps because they're easy to choose. I look at outerwear mostly when walking around, you know, at shoes and accessories. I did see cashmere and beautiful sweaters being worn in monochromatic colors like the cobalt blue with the necklace on top. Outerwear, fur, fur, and more fur. I don't know if there's anything else more elegant to wear in winter. Now, if it was real fur or not, yes. And 
and no, I've seen both kinds and they exude elegance and sophistication. They were mostly black with trimming. I love seeing this trend of puffy fur trim on the sleeves and on the bottom of a midi coat, almost like the skirt outline. With some black shears and knee-high boots, it's the classic European feminine look. It's my absolute favorite one for cold weather because sometimes we want to radiate femininity even in winter and the contrast of black feathery fur with a bright skin and rosy cheeks, it feels so enchanting. Vests are also popular fur vests, the ones that are a bit oversized and worn as outerwear. It's a nice change of scenery when walking in a crowd and you will most definitely stand out when wearing fur. Moto jackets, another popular fashion choice for women and men walking the streets of Italy. Here we have the simple monochromatic look as well as the metal embellishment option. Listen, Italians know their leather and leather jackets wear everywhere in street shop. The benefit of this abundance is that you can find really good quality pieces at reasonable prices because there's a lot of it. It's locally made and you have the rich diversity of colors and styles from cropped versions to midi length coats. And combining the leather and fur, here's my next purchase from Venice, this beautiful pair of leather gloves. I was instantly charmed by it. I was purposefully looking for a leather pair here in Italy. It's a quality pair that should last for a very long time. Now the color choices are endless. As a first pair, I recommend the black to match your black coat, which I assume most of us have, but it can also be a neutral shade. I tried it on with my black coat and when combining the coat and gloves, you can see this almost fur bracelet-like appearance of gray stand out gently. Now who says you can't look elegant all bundled up? Let's talk bottoms. Skinny jeans top the charts again for the most popular style worn on Italian streets. They were combined with the Chelsea boots or chunky heels, platform heels and booties. Tapered pants are popular for a smart, casual look. I've seen this a lot in business class on a train, wide leg pants in a younger crowd and the ripped jeans. Skirts are a nice welcome to my world. Lots of Italian outfits include skirts or dresses, midi fitted coats or shorter versions, thigh length, you know, with sheer or opaque black tights and heels. This is our attractive look in cold weather. I remember the general rule was that as long as there's a skirt flopping around above the knee, it's an instant eye catcher. It's flirty and men love staring at women's legs. And speaking of skirts, allow me to show you some eye candy. Coming straight from a Venetian store display, I saw the skirt passing by and I had to stop and stare. It looks outrageous and with a multitude of colors, it can easily be matched with any monochromatic top. It's a very bold look, which is unlike me to wear, but I also don't like to look predictable. I like to think that in the right combination, I can make most anything look good, or at least try to. Um, it's a fun process. One of the benefits of travel shopping is that when you come back, no one else has it, so you will be unique in your own way. It's a nice souvenir I can actually wear. Lounge sets are also popular among Italians. I think neutral cashmere matching top and bottom bottom worn with white sneakers or with platform loafers. I was quite surprised to see these sets being worn outside in the streets because it's mostly purpose for inside use and home when you're lazing on a couch. Now for a country where fashion and dressing up is a 24 seven lifestyle, casual elastic loungewear definitely raised my eyebrows, but maybe they were tourists, not sure. Uh, <laughs> I've seen it several times, so I must report it. Let's talk shoes. Italian women Women and men wear Chelsea boots, beautiful leather booties with very low or no heel design. They look so, so good. I've seen them worn with skinny jeans, with tapered tailor pants, black slacks. Men almost exclusively wore these boots. They are comfortable, well-made, protect against the winter elements. They fit very stylishly, like a glove almost, don't they? When you have a nice leather slim pair, it even feels chic and elegant because of the high quality. Neutral sneakers were also a fresh look for me to see. I've seen a combination of rose pink and nude sneakers, the full monochromatic style in all three cities, in Rome, Florence, and Venice. 
They were paired casually with light denim jeans and a neutral light midi length coat. I'm used to seeing the white leather sneaker combination with low or no show socks with jeans and neutral coat. Such a classic stylish combination, which was again on repeat in Italy as well, but the cool neutral shoe tone was a new addition in my view. Platform heels are also popular. Knee high boots were very common with the cute midi length or short length coats. We have the pointy toe stiletto heels, the platform knee high heels, and booties with tights, of course. Loafers are a popular choice among Italians in the classic look or alterations with platforms and metal clasps. And here I have to tell you about a beautiful combination that I haven't seen before and took me by surprise. There were these elegant ladies walking in front of me, both with leather Chelsea boots, both tapered wool pants. One had a slight roll up, which I'm not sure if she did manually or the style cam sewn in, but looked really smooth and polished combined with her wool coat. And the other, are you ready? She had high low hem slacks. Now, when I say high low, I mean one, one and a half centimeter difference side cut, not very noticeable, but it was a perfect fit on the top of the boot in front so it wouldn't fold up when stepping. The back was just normal length, but from the side, it looks slightly longer. I would have loved to ask her where she got it from, but unless you see them in stores, which I search and I can't find, I have a hunch that it's a style that she personally adopted. We can all get it done at the seamstress to customize the length of our pants for the perfect sizing and fit for the shoes that we wear them with. Well done. I was impressed by the meticulous fit and has most definitely inspired me for future pants alteration options. Square boots were also popular with crop jeans and sock boots, stiletto type with pointy toe and thin heels. Makeup. Mm, the makeup was either there in abundance or none at all. It seemed heavy and didn't make a positive impression on me. Unlike the French one, which appeared minimalistic and let the natural imperfections be part of the enhanced look. I've also seen the effects of heavy smoking and I think it was visible on the overall texture and uneven pigment discoloration, specifically the brown spots. Coming from Romania with a similar smoking culture, long-term smoking browns the skin, the fingers, and the face. Now, I might be looking into it too much, but smoking on the street is still allowed and when walking in a crowd behind them was quite an often annoyance. Now, am I the only one who noticed the heavy cakey makeup? It's difficult to blend in a foundation that is far off from your own shade because behind the ears, at the hairline, and the back of your neck will be the first place to give it away. Now, I don't want to generalize that everyone was the same, but some of the Italian ladies were fake thick eyelashes, thick eyeliner on top and bottom, lip liner and dark lipstick. The orange tones of the foundation stood out to me and you can notice it on TV if you look at any Italian channels. We know that the Mediterranean climate and pigment is a warm toned one, but in winter, I think most of us are at least one shade lighter and should probably have at least one other brighter foundation than the normal summer one. I personally have four shades and I mix and match in spring and fall when transitioning. Now, tanning salon are also popular in Europe and the face needs to match the body in shades. So perhaps that's the drive behind the darker foundation, but I think in winter it's acceptable to look more pale than usual. What do you think? And the last note, because yes, one cannot ignore Italian menswear. Lots and lots of suits, button shirts and ties. Oh, how I miss them. We don't see this upstyle in the States anymore. Not really, unless it's a conservative corporate workplace. Italian men wear slacks and shiny leather dress shoes. The smart look was very refreshing. The low Chelsea boots were also very popular among men with an elongated slim fit. I hope you enjoyed my fashion review of Italian streetwear happening right now. Don't forget to email me if you would like to participate in the giveaway. The discount code and links are below. If you enjoyed this video, you will like my Paris fashion streetwear video where I share the popular French trends from this season. I'll see you there next.